Hey, third graders, it's Mrs. Linderman. You should have a new spiral notebook or a spot where we can start taking some notes for our opinion uh, unit. So if you don't have that in front of you with a pencil, you need to pause the video and get, get that right now. All right, we're gonna start with our opinion writing. And we're gonna talk about what is an opinion. So hopefully the other day you watched uh, that video on the crayons, right? The day that they quit. They had some strong opinions about what Duncan should and shouldn't do. So I want you to copy down this page and then we're going to talk about what are some good things in an opinion letter. All right. So you're going to write the very top. This is the title opinion writing. This is our new unit. Okay. What is an opinion? An opinion is a belief or a way of thinking about something. And we're going to brainstorm next week of some things that you could write an opinion writing on. And it'll, it'll make more sense once we get going. Here's our learning target. I can write an opinion letter and share information and ideas clearly. So you're going to be writing a letter in this unit to somebody that you want to share some information with. And I'm going to show you some examples today. Okay, so pause the video, write this down because you're going to be sending a picture of this to your teacher today. So making sure that you get this copied down correctly. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. So the other day I asked you to comment on what you noticed about the book, The, the Day the Crayons Quit. What were some things that you saw in there? So you're going to be writing a letter to someone, all right? And these are going to be the features of what a strong opinion letter has. So in just a second, you're going to copy these things down. Okay, let me explain first. But remember, you can pause the video as you're copying these things down. And this page will also be sent to your teacher today. So we're looking for you to take two pages of notes and attach those to your Google Classroom assignment and send that because we want to make sure that you're following along. You're getting the information as you're watching the video and you're really thinking about your opinion writing. Okay, so these are your notes. If we were in the classroom, you'd be copying this down. Okay, so what makes a strong opinion letter? We've written letters before. We've had videos on that. And remember, your opinion is something that you think or that you believe and you feel strongly about. So a strong opinion letter talks about one main topic that the author, that's you, has an opinion about. Okay, so you're not jumping around from ideas. You're sticking to one topic. Like maybe you want to go to Disney World for vacation. Or maybe you think your school should recycle. Or maybe you think you should have a later bedtime. Okay, you're going to stick to that one topic. A strong opinion letter also has a lead that hooks the reader. And we've talked about strong leads before. In this lead, you're going to be stating your opinion what you think or believe or want to happen, that's going to be part of your lead. It's going to have three reasons why you think that, and you're going to support that with some examples. And like I said, as we get into the unit, it will make a little bit more sense. But remember, these are things that make a strong opinion letter. So these are the things that you're going to have to kind of check off and make sure that you have when we're done at the end. After the three reasons, you have to have an ending, right? And that ending is going to restate your opinion. So what you said in your lead, you're going to restate that. So say the same thing, but in maybe a little bit of a different way, using some different words. We've practiced using our power organizer this year. So you know that a strong opinion letter is going to have five paragraphs. Remember that power organizer. And if you're new to Z Connect, this will be something that we'll teach you. Remember, you've got your lead at the top, your introduction, your conclusion or your ending at the bottom. Those are the triangles. And in between are our three paragraphs. And depending on what we're writing about, that information will change. So this time, those in, in, uh, inside paragraphs are going to be those three reasons. Okay, you're going to use some more transition words. We've practiced those in our writing. And then, because this is an opinion letter, you are going to be including all five parts of a friendly letter. Okay, and we'll get into that a little bit more in detail later on. 
that includes the date, a greeting, the body or the message of the letter, a closing, and the signature. All right, so these are things that make a strong opinion letter. So your job right now is to pause the video and copy all this down carefully so that you know the expectations, what you're going to be including in your letter. And then as we work the next few weeks, you'll learn how to do all of these things. So pause the video and copy this down. All right, now that you've learned what an opinion is, right? What your learning target is for this particular unit, right? What makes a strong opinion letter? We're going to look at a couple examples and I'm going to show you one from my friend, Mrs. Patrick. She's another teacher and I'm going to show you one from a third grade student from a different school. All right. So let's look at this and I want to see what you notice. Okay. We know it's a letter and they used orange font. So it's a little hard to see, but you'll notice there's the date. This is the part that's called the greeting. All of this, all that message on the inside is called the body. And then down here where it says sincerely, that's the closing and then their name, the signature. And this was written by Madden. He's another third grader in Zealand. So here's what it says, and I want you to be listening for the things that you notice. It's written on April 9th, 2019. Dear Dad, I know you aren't a big fan of cats. I know you like dogs, but here are some reasons you might change your mind of saying no to my letter, hopefully. What I'm trying to say is that, in my opinion, we should have a cat. My first reason is, did you realize I'm an only child? A cat would be like a brother or sister to me. I'm trying to say it would keep me company and would keep me from being lonely. 16 people in my class have pets, so they're probably not lonely. My second reason is cats are great pets because they are calm and quiet. It's easy to fall asleep because they're not going to wake you up and they're calm, so they won't bounce all over. You can also give him or her a yarn ball or a toy that doesn't make sound and you will be fine. My third reason is when you're asleep and you don't have to worry about them scratching the couches or hurting you, it can be declawed. They don't go outside every time. In the winter, if you open the door, it would be cold. A cat is an indoor bathroom. You can teach me how to clean the litter box. If you're wondering what type of cat I want, an orange baby Persian cat will do. My recommendation is when I'm at mom's, you will still have someone to play. So you don't get bored and you have company too. Sincerely, your wanting cat son, Madden. P.S. Pretty pleased with the cherry on top. Also a yes would be awesome. So what do you notice that Madden did? He included all those parts of a letter, right? I pointed those out. Here's his introduction. Did he state his opinion? His opinion is that, hey, we should have a cat, right? And then he gave his three reasons. My first reason, my second reason, my third reason, right? So he's not just saying, I'm an only child. He goes into detail. So that's supporting or giving an example of why this is a reason, right? It would keep him company. He'd have somebody to play with. It would be like a sibling. Right? He talks about they're great pets because they're calm and quiet. And then he goes on to explain why. Right? And then at the, the third reason, he does the same thing. Not only does he tell his reason, but he expands on that and he explains a little bit more and gives some details. Okay? And then down here at the end is where he, he doesn't say it in the same way that I think we should get a cat, but he says, right, that when I'm not home and I'm at my mom's house, you'll still have somebody to play with and you won't get bored, right? You'll have company too. So that's the reason he, his opinion of why they should have a cat. All right. So that's by another third grader. Maybe you remember, I bet you were in first grade and we had all those snow days. Mr. D. Kuiper, he's our superintendent. 
He's like the principal of all the principals. My friend, Mrs. Patrick, she's a teacher and she had a strong opinion because that year when we had so many snow days, they were gonna make us go extra days into the summer and she didn't want that to happen. So her opinion was important to her and she wanted to share that to, to Mr. DeKuyper in a letter. So here's what my friend, Mrs. Patrick wrote. Let's look first. I see the parts of a letter. I see the body. At the bottom, I can see her closing and her signature. Do you notice the five paragraphs? This is just like the power organizer. Our top triangle, our three rectangles, and our bottom triangle. All right, so you're using that power organizer to guide you in your letter. So here's what Mrs. Patrick said. Dear Mr. DeKuyper, I know we have had over 10 snow days this year, and you must be worried about getting enough learning time for students. Look at, in my opinion, we should not add two extra days of school in the summer. I think you will be interested in my reasons. Did you know that many people schedule vacations for the first week of June? A coworker of mine, who's a third grade teacher at New Groningen, already bought plane tickets for her family to visit California. I asked all of the kids in her class and 12 out of the 26 of them are going on vacation at the same time. We wouldn't want them to miss that opportunity, would we? So there's her first reason. People have vacation right after school gets out. There are lots of ways to learn in the summer. So that's her second reason, right? Kids can learn other ways instead of going to school for a couple extra days. Many kids go to camps in June. Imagine if you had to miss out on something you were really looking forward to just because of the crazy winter weather. I don't think we should make kids go to school extra days because of something that's not their fault. So there's her first reason. Her second reason, and she's explaining why she has this reason. Here's her third reason. Did you know that the average temperature in June is 78 degrees? and the record temperature for June is 104 degrees, that's hot, extra hot if you are stuck in a classroom that doesn't have air conditioning. Surely you understand how difficult it would be for children to learn under those conditions. Last, if you truly feel we need to make up those extra days, let's do it in a fun and memorable way. I have an idea for you. Let the kids and teachers stay at school over a weekend it will be like a sleepover. They'll love it, learn a lot, and still get out of school on June 9. Thanks so much for your open mind and consideration. And then she signed it, your loyal literacy coach, Julie Patrick. So she's got all those parts of a friendly letter, right, that we talked about right here. She's got some transition words. We know she's using all five paragraphs from her power organizer. She's clearly stating her opinion at the beginning and the end, and she's giving reasons with those examples, right? We should not have extra days, right? And down here, she's saying, if you have to do that, do it on the weekend before the end of school so that we don't go into the summertime. And then here are her three reasons, and she expands on that with examples of why that's a good reason for her. All right, so you're going to do something very similar. And we're going to talk next week about ideas that we might have to write about. So start thinking about maybe some things that you're really passionate about, maybe some things that you are hoping to get or places that you're hoping to go, maybe something you'd like to do with your family. Remember, today's assignment in Google Classroom is to copy down these two pages, right? These are your notes. These are things you're going to look back on when you're writing and you need to have them written down. So I'm going to have you take two pictures. And remember, when you take a picture, you need to be standing over top of your paper. Okay. If you take a picture from an angle, your teacher's not going to be able to see it. So make sure, check your picture after you take it, that you can actually read it. Because if you can't read it, either can your teachers. All right, so you're gonna have two pictures to attach 
to today's Google Classroom assignment, and you're going to turn that in, and we're going to get started on our writing.